Alright guys, well I'm back today with another high value and budget handgun review and this one is actually the Kiger 9C made by Anderson Manufacturing, commonly known for their AR-15 lowers and complete rifles. Now Anderson has always been that budget brand, but a budget brand that seemed to work very well. So I'm really excited to get this handgun out to the range to try out and I've been running it. It's a very interesting handgun, especially for the market that is in. A Glock 9 19 Gen 3 clone or copy. That is a heavily saturated market. So for Anderson to come in with something, they better do it well and they better do it affordable because a lot of other companies are already doing this. The first time I saw something like this was actually at American Pawn and Gun located in Monroe, North Carolina. After talking with Greg, the owner, he wanted to send out a frame, but we ended up deciding the best bet was to try out the entire handgun. And that's what we're doing today. But like I mentioned earlier, you can actually just purchase this complete frame and that does transfer as a handgun or actually a lower depending on how you transfer it on that 4473. So it is the firearm part of the gun. Now there are going to be some compatibility questions that we'll address in the next video we're going to be doing about this handgun, but initial compatibility seems a very good across the lineup for interchangeability between this and another kind of key player in this industry, the Palmetto State Armory Dagger. And that's really this handgun's competitor. When we talk about a Glock 19 Gen 3, I don't think this is really competing with that. A lot of guys that buy Glock just want to buy Glock. And then there's a lot of guys like me that love trying out new and interesting handguns, maybe can't necessarily afford a standard Glock 19. So these are going to be great options, especially for different customizing options. So American Pawn and Guns sent this out to the channel for us to try, and I'm really glad they did. So if you're ever in Monroe, North Carolina, they're right off 74. Swing by, check them out. Tell them 704 Tactical sent you over, and they'll hook you up. Now, one of the first things I noticed right out of the box is the frame is pretty dramatically different than the dagger and the traditional Generation 3 Glock 19. It's got a lot more aggressive texturing. It also has interesting cuts in areas that you might need to access certain things that makes it pretty interesting. It also has some nice stippling and aggressive nature at the top, a very kind of customized and cut up trigger guard, as well as a pick rail at the front rather than the traditional Glock rail system. The other thing I noticed out of the box, and I'll make sure it's clear one more time, is how smooth and well built this handgun is. If you took the Anderson Manufacturing logo off this and just showed me this handgun, it truly feels like one of those top tier custom Glocks, which was pretty impressive out of the box. I mean, a lot of the attention to detail and what they've done with this handgun is pretty spectacular at the price. And again, we were talking about a little bit more than a Palmetto St. Armory Dagger base model. And we're talking about a little bit less than a Glock 19 Gen 3 new in the box. So it's going to split the price difference between the two. Another thing I noticed was the trigger on this guy is absolutely spectacular for a Glock 19 clone. But let's talk about this handgun on its own independent basis and stay tuned for the compatibility test coming up this week. So 
One of the first things I want to discuss is ergonomically this handgun compared to some others and just how it stacks up on its own. We already mentioned it's got some very nice texturing, aggressive cuts in the back strap and the front strap, very aggressive texturing on the side. I can imagine this would be very frustrating if you were concealed carrying without an undershirt, but uh, it does great gripping your hand in a wide variety of scenarios. So definitely pluses and minuses to the grip texture. I love what they've done here with this cutout. A lot of times I've noticed, even with the Gen 3 19s and the PSA daggers, the mag release is a little bit hard to get to um, because of the way the frame is designed. Well, this one I feel like should be a little bit longer, but it's a little bit easier to get to because of this cutout right here. So that's pretty impressive ergonomically. This one also has an undercut built into the trigger guard, which a lot of guys will do for aftermarket mods on a Gen 19 or a G19 Gen 3. So this one already has that undercut, making you get a good high grip. Uh, one thing I do want to complain about ergonomically, though, is it seems like some of these sharp edges right here just need to be hit with a Dremel tool buffer wheel. Not an actual thing to remove plastic, but to round off some of these edges, I will be doing that. And I think that's really going to clean some of that up. Um, it's not that big of a deal. It's definitely functional. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, if we're nitpicking here, that would be the only thing I would change about the frame. It also has some index points right here and you can almost see the shelf right here. It also has a kind of a cutout to access those takedown levers. The pins seem to be holding in perfectly. Nothing is walking loose. And I love the fact that doing a pick rail up at the front rather than just that traditional Glock rail it gives it a little bit more versatility when it comes to the frame. Um, everything about the frame when it comes to the mag loading is pretty good. It's got a slight taper right here. It loads up nicely and it has this small gap right here, which is good. If something binds up like a double feed, you can actually get your fingers in there and rip out the mag if you need to. Now let's talk about the slide itself. And the first thing I noticed, it does have some interesting cuts at the top, very good slide serrations to manipulate the slide and do press checks. And the sights are fairly rudimentary, kind of Glock style sights, nothing fancy, but you can always swap those out. The finish on this guy is mediocre. It's not the greatest finish. I've already have some wear and some scratches on it. Um, is it a big deal? No, not really. It's not the worst finish in the world. Um, and maybe those will wipe off. I just notice it showing a little bit more after two range trips than some of my daggers and some of my Glocks. And maybe it's it, this will all wipe off with oil and clean off, but it's not that really that big of a deal. Again, it's, you know, it is what it is when it comes to that. Um, the overall reliability has been great. I do want to give a huge shout out to Callaway Ballistics for sponsoring the ammo to help make this video. Without their support, it'd be really difficult to continue to produce reviews, and we've put a lot of rounds through this, and we'll be putting even more in the compatibility test, so you can stay tuned for the update videos on this handgun. But I also have the code 704 Tactical for free shipping on ammo orders over $200. Definitely check these guys out. I also shot some of their 147 grain subsonic ammo out of here and a few different hollow points with no functional issues whatsoever. The ejection pattern seemed fairly strong. No issues with feeding, no issues with function, and mag compatibility worked great with Glock Factory mags as well as the Magpul 1 magazine that this ships with. That's the other thing. Um, I wish it shipped with a couple of magazines rather than this just one because when you're talking about a Glock 19 Gen 3, you're getting two, and then some of the Gen 4s and Gen 5s, you're getting three. But they do include this actually very nice streamlined case in the box, which I thought was pretty cool. A lot of times when you're going to the range, this will help prevent it from scratching up or getting dirt and debris in there. So it's a pretty cool case that they've sent over. And it's been working out great. When it comes to recoil impulse, this feels like a Glock 19. Uh, to me, the PSA dagger and the Glock 19 feel just a touch smoother in my hand. And I don't know if that's because some of the texturing is a little bit rougher and some of the edges are just a little bit sharper. And maybe it's kind of translating in my hand as a little bit snappier than it is. But if you shot a Glock 19, you shot the PSA dagger, this is going to be pretty much the exact same recoil impulse. So no real differences there. It handles like a Glock. It feels like a Glock. Uh, despite some of those differences in your hand, at the end of the day, this is a Glock 19 clone and it shoots very similarly. Now, is it going to be as reliable as a Glock? That's yet to be seen. 
I've got a couple of Gen 3 Glock 19s with thousands upon thousands of rounds through them with absolutely no failures. I just haven't had the time behind this gun to say that, but initially it's been working great and we are right at about 250 rounds for the initial first shots video. I just want to let you guys know kind of the round count through this one. We'll be shooting a lot more through this as time goes on and as ammo permits, but we will be doing that compatibility test soon. So subscribe to the channel so you won't want to miss that. Also, I've been getting a lot of things lately about people being unsubscribed to the channel or having the notification bell unchecked. So definitely check to make sure you're subscribed and that notification bell is on. And let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Are you looking for an Anderson? Is that something on your list that you're looking for another Glock 19 clone? For me, I think this would be really cool, is if you bought the frame with some of these upgrades over the PSA dagger, especially that really nice trigger. I mean, this trigger is super smooth for a Glock, and then it's got a very crisp and lightweight break for a Glock. I'm going to say for a Glock because obviously Glock triggers are not the best, but this is by far the best trigger out of a Glock 19 standard Gen 3 and the PSA dagger. This one has the best trigger, so I could see you grabbing this frame and throwing like a dagger upper assembly on here and having you a really nice gun. Again, it seems to work. We're going to do a, a full compatibility test coming up. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.